G'day, it's Chris Betcher here, and I'd like to talk to you about a feature of the admin console that I think is vastly underused in schools, and that's this idea of buildings and resources. I see so few schools actually making great use of this. I want to show you how it works because it's pretty cool. So in the admin console, admin.google.com, I'll go into the buildings and resources tab, and you can see there's a few things I can do in here. And most of what I'm interested in here is in this resource management. Now, what this is about is if you've got resources in your school, like, for example, meeting rooms or uh, trolleys of uh, Chromebooks, for example, or maybe a, you know, a, a, a rehearsal space that you want to be able to book into. So when you're creating an, a time in your calendar, you also want to book a resource to go with that, whether it's a room or a projector or a, uh, a whiteboard, whatever it might be. So you can see I've got in here a number of resources already set up, and I want to show you how you go about the process of setting these up completely. So let me just... Um, get rid of this video you don't need to see that so uh, in here first thing you would do is you define a building so right now I've only got one building set up it's called the main building but let's go into manage buildings and let's create a second one by clicking on this um, this plus button here I could also do a bulk upload you see there's a button here for bulk uploading so if I had a list of buildings in my school I could just upload the whole thing um, you can click on that button it'll give you the instructions on how to do that but I'm just gonna add a single building right now and let's call this the performing Arts Center, right? And we'll give it a description, um, arts and music. And this building might have a number of floors in it. So for example, it could have ground one and two, so it's a three-story building. And you can even give it an address and it will actually find that on a map and it'll map it for you. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that for now. So I'll add that building and you can see that now I have a second building in my list of buildings. Fantastic, let's go back to the buildings and resources section here. And now I can go back into resource management. I have my performing arts center set here. So I wanna create a new resource or a new space, let's say. Let's say it's a rehearsal room. So I will click on the plus button here to add a new resource. And first thing I do is pick the type of space it is. So in this case, it's a meeting space. The building that it's in, in this case, is the performing arts center. The floor it's on, let's say it's on the first floor. And I could put a section here, so maybe it's the one east, or, or you know, it could be some designation that you use. What's the resource name? Well, let's just call it the rehearsal room. And let's say this rehearsal room has a capacity for 10 students. Okay, and you can put some more things in here, um, which I'll show you in just a second. So there's a whole bunch of uh, options in here. One of these is called allow calendar based room release. And that is if someone books the calendar and let's say it's a meeting for three people and someone books it, but the other two people decline the meeting and they say they're not going this system because you clearly don't need the room. If it's just the one person, it will actually allow the calendar to release the room if nobody turns up. Okay. So that's how you add a resource. And you can see uh, where, is, where we're here. This, this is the rehearsal room here. Now, this rehearsal room might have certain facilities. For example, it might have a whiteboard or it might have a recording studio or it might have whatever, whatever the facility might be in that rehearsal room. So what we can do over here is in this corner here where it says manage resource features, we can go in there, we can add different features. Now, right now I've got two set up here. One is um, video conferencing using uh, GVC, the Google video conferencing system, or telephony, the room might have a phone. But let's add another feature. Let's say this feature has um, a whiteboard. Okay, and that type of feature would be obviously not video or telephony, so it would be other. So we'll say save, so we'll add that in as a potential feature. And let's just add one more feature. Let's say this has um, uh, uh, recording facilities. Oops, uh, recording facilities. Okay, and that again, that's other. So we'll say save. So we've just created additional features that could be available in rooms. So what I want to do now is go to the rehearsal room that I just set up. Just click on that to open it up. And this is the sort of the summary of that room. So you can see there's all that information we put in before. But down here in features, what I'd like to do is to add some extra features to this room. So this one had uh, recording facilities. Let's say this one also has a whiteboard. And let's just say it also has an internal phone system as well. So we're starting to add the features that this room has. So I know when I book this room, I'm actually able to make sure it has uh, the, the facilities that I need in that room. 
So I say save. Going back to my uh, resource list down here. And you can see now that the Performing Arts Centre, again, if I click on that now, just to check it out, you can see it actually is telling me these are the features that this room has. It has a telephone, it has some recording facilities and a whiteboard. Okay, so here we are in Google Calendar. Let's see how these meeting rooms actually play out in the real world. So let's say I'm a user on my system here and I want to make a meeting for, so let's say I'm the music teacher and I want to make a, a rehearsal a time from 12 till 1.30 on a Tuesday. So I click on 12, drag down to 1.30 to create my, my space here. And um, what I, let's call it uh, rehearsal, rehearsal band, right? Um, now, if I go to more options here, and you can see this opens up to give me all the different options on, on this particular meeting space, and I can add other guests. So as you know, so I have uh, some Simpsons characters in here. So let's just say uh, Bart and Lisa are both going to attend rehearsal practice with me, but I need a room. I actually need to book into the rehearsal space. I can come up here to rooms and it's going to show me the rooms in the main building and the Performing Arts Centre, which we just set up. So if I open up Performing Arts Centre, I should see here is the rehearsal room. So if I mouse over it, it tells me it's a room for 10 people. It's in the Performing Arts Centre, one east. It's got a phone and also recording facilities and a whiteboard. So, the re so it's telling me a little bit about the room. So I'll select that and it adds that now into my room booking. Um, the reason it's now saying no rooms found is because I've booked the room and I'm only showing available rooms. Because I've booked it, it's no longer available. And you can see here it is here. So the attendees for this meeting is myself, Bart, Lisa, and the room itself. Uh, and so now when I save that, uh, yes, sure, I'll send the invitations to my people. Uh, I've now got a booking in here for the um, for rehearsal for band in the Performing Arts Center from 12 to 1.45. It's all booked there just like that. Now, if somebody else tries to come and book a room at that time, they won't be able to. It'll show as an unavailable room. Let me show you what I mean. Um, room one, for example, if I just turn this on, you can see room one has some bookings here from 11 to 12, 12.30 to 1, 1.30 to 2.30 on a Thursday. Okay, just like a permanent booking for that room or uh, you know, whatever booking someone's put in and they've, they've reserved that room space. So if I was to go in and try and make a meeting from, say, 11.30 to 12.30 on a Thursday, so let's go in here and let's say I want that space. I want to set this up for a meeting. And when I go to uh, book into that meeting and I'm looking for an available room, and I, partic I know I want room one, so I go in here to the main building and you see room one is not available because it's booked out. If I show available rooms to switch that to show unavailable rooms, you'll see that it in fact then does show me uh, that room one, this one here, is in fact not available. It's got the line through it. So this is only gonna show me by default. It will only show me the available rooms. There's no point showing me a room if I can't have it. So um, just cancel out of there. So that's how you use it. That's you, the, the whole flow there from going into the admin uh, console, creating a building and a room and features and facilities, uh, loading them up, then being able to go into a calendar and actually book a room, including a resource as well. So you can use it to book a, you know, a trolley of Chromebooks, or you might be using it to book a specific room or a rehearsal space or whatever it might be. It totally changes the way in a school you can manage those resources because people know what's available and when, uh, and it releases it if they're not going to use it. Hope that is really helpful.